In this module, we're going to talk about vectors and coordinate systems. So previously, we have looked at vectors. They described them as a magnitude and direction, and also that a vector is not determined by the beginning and end point, only its magnitude and direction, which means you can translate vectors as long as you don't rotate them. And today, we want to look at those with coordinate systems. So say I have a table table here and I have a little uh, toy car and this car has some velocity in that direction and I want to represent that velocity by this vector and so I can say it's going uh, at a speed so it has a magnitude of 1.7 meters per second but I also need to somehow describe this direction now previously uh, we were looking at north south and and, and those sort of uh, directions on a map but that's not so useful if I'm on a lab table with my my toy car so I, I'm going to put together here a coordinate system here with an xy axis and a good coordinate system always labels the positive x and y axis and and I'm going to say uh, it's aligned uh, perpendicular and parallel with the edges of the table and so um, I now uh, have my velocity vector and I place it so that the origin of the vector or that the tail of the vector is at the origin of the coordinate system and I can do that because I can translate vectors wherever I want so I have the uh, uh, tail at the origin so now I can uh, sort of measure this angle if I want and and maybe I knew know what it is and say it's 20 degrees I can now assign a direction to my vector relative to my coordinate system. It's 20 degrees, I'll call that uh, counterclockwise from positive x axis. So now I have a uh, vector, it has a, a uh, magnitude and a direction from this coordinate system just like before. Now, I want to uh, look at a different way now of representing this vector using my coordinate system. With this coordinate system, I now have another unique way to determine the magnitude and the direction of this vector. With the tail at the origin of the coordinate system, I'm looking for the coordinate points of the tip of that vector. Th though that point now uniquely defines the magnitude and the direction of that vector with just the x and y coordinate points of that tip. So let's see how we can find those. I draw a straight line down here, kind of straight. Uh, this makes a right angle. And so I'm looking for this uh, x coordinate right here. And then I draw a straight line over. I'm looking for this y coordinate there. And uh, I can um, find what these are using my trig rules. I know that these angles uh, are the same. And so if I look at what those are, the x coordinate then of the point of the tip is equal to, uh, since this is a right triangle, the length of the hypotenuse, which is 1.7 times cosine of 20 degrees is the uh, x coordinate and now the y y coordinate which is right here is is the length of this line and that can be determined again with our right triangle rules to be 1.7 sine of 20 degrees this is the uh, x y coordinates of the tip which is two numbers i can calculate those 1.6 and 0 0.58, and this is still a velocity, so it has units of meters per second. These two numbers now uniquely represent the uh, magnitude and direction of this vector. So let's look at another one. 
let's say I have a, uh, a vector that's pointing over in this direction. And so I want to uh, know what this uh, vector is, its magnitude and direction. Let's say it has a uh, length of uh, 5.2 meters per second. And when I draw my coordinate system, I'll put the origin at the tail of the vector, identify my positive uh, x and y axes, and then I look at this angle here, which I say this time is 30 degrees. So I have a vector here. Let's see, a vector that has a length of 5.2 meters per second and a direction of 30 degrees counterclockwise from positive y axis. And so you can see, you keep looking at magnitudes and directions like this as kind of cumbersome, why it's kind of nice to be able to represent them with just pairs of numbers. So again, if I'm going to find the numbers that uniquely define this, I'm looking for the coordinate points of the tip of, uh, of, of the vector when its uh, tail is at the origin. And so in this case, the x-coordinate is going to be the uh, length of this side. I, I drew that up here. And so the length, again, here I'll draw my right triangle. There's a right triangle. There's a right triangle. And so the length of this side uh, right here is equal to the hypotenuse, 5.2 times sine of the, the angle there, which is 30 degrees. And if I look on whether it's positive or negative, I see that the x-coordinate is on the left side of the origin, so it's a negative 5.2 sine 30. And so now if I want to look at the y-coordinate, I'm, I'm looking for this length here. And that length is given by 5.2 uh, cosine of 30 degrees, and it is above the uh, x-axis, so that's a positive number. And so now I can go ahead and calculate those, and I get negative uh, 2.6 meters per second, and then 4.5 meters per second. And so these now are the two numbers that uniquely determine that velocity. And so uh, these two are now called the x and y coordinate of this vector. So in general, I can write a vector in two dimensions as a, as a pair of numbers, vy and vx. This is now the y coordinate. And this is the x coordinate. Okay, so uh, given those two coordinates, let, let's say, for example, now you're given the coordinates, can you go back and find the magnitude and direction? And you can using the same uh, trigonometry rules. Let's look at this vector again. Uh, I've got uh, x and, and y coordinate. How would I calculate its magnitude? The magnitude of a vector is written a number of ways. It, it can be written with the vector sign with the absolute value on either side. It is also often written as just the uh, symbol without the vector sign as the magnitude of the vector v. And so sometimes that can get confusing, but of course that that is the fastest way. And so um, I like to use the absolute values for a while until we become very familiar with them and then and then just drop them and use the regular uh, letter for the vector magnitude. Well, if I want to know the magnitude of this vector using the Pythagorean theorem, that's equal to 
the x square root of the x component squared plus the uh, y component squared. So in this case, the vector would be uh, two point square root of 2.6 squared plus 4.5 squared. And I calculate that out, and we recover our, our 5.2. And so that's how you call, calculate the magnitude. Well, how do you, how do you calculate the, uh, the angle now? I have, if I, all I had were the components. Well, that gives us back to our triangle. If we come up to this triangle, if we didn't know this angle, but we knew that, that this length was, uh, 2.6, and this length was 4.5, then we could calculate that angle theta. Theta is equal to the tangent. I'm oh, sorry. Tangent theta is equal to 2.6 over 4.5. So theta is equal to arctangent of 2.6, 4.5, and that we would recover then our 30 degrees. Okay, so if you were to go to a, uh, a book and look up a formula for vectors and coordinate systems, um, often you'd, you would come up with things like um, tangent theta is equal to, say, the x component over the y component, or that the vector is equal to the uh, magnitude uh, cos theta and the magnitude sine theta. Um, you can't do that. And the problem is, those angles when you write, look up formulas like that, are defined relative to very specific axes, which may not be the axes you're, you're working with or want to work with. When you work with vectors and, uh, vectors and coordinate systems and components, it is absolutely critical that you always go back to your coordinate system and your picture, because the the sine and, and tangent rules, Pythagorean theorem, those always hold, and then you can measure your angle relative to any axis that you want. Let's take a look at just at one more as an example. So if I have a coordinate system here, this is my positive x, and this is my positive y. Let's say I have a... Uh, uh, vector that direction. It's 70 degrees clockwise from the positive x-axis. And let's say it has a, a magnitude of 8. We're not giving it units. We'll just give it a, a regular number this time. Since we always use our, our vector can be written as uh, v is equal to uh, uh, 8, then 70 degrees clockwise from positive x. So, uh, using our, our fundamental rules, we'll draw ourselves a right triangle, and then in this case, the uh, x component is here, which is going to be equal to 8 uh, cosine 70 degrees, and the y component is uh, going to be here, and that's 8 sine 70 degrees. And the x-coordinate was along the positive x-axis, so that's positive. And the y-coordinate is along the negative y-axis, so that's negative. Again, you see, I calculate the number only using the fundamental trig rules. And then I decide whether it's positive or negative from my picture and how the vector sits in the coordinate system. That way, you'll never be wrong with your signs, which can create a real problem uh, in these types of uh, questions. All right, and we solve those. We get 2.74 for 
for the positive and then negative 7.52 for uh, the y-coordinate. That ends this module.